Okay, what I want to talk about now are just some uh, basic uh, uh, concepts in MATLAB. I'll go through and then we'll write some uh, simple MATLAB programs. Um, usually, uh, um, textbooks begin by talking about MATLAB variable types, although if you've never actually done any programming, um, I don't know how helpful knowing these variable types will be if you don't really have any idea and how you might use them. But I'll just quick run through the list here. We have two different types of floating point numbers, single precision and double precision. Uh, a, a number of different uh, precision integers, 8-bit uh, integers, 16-bit integers, 32-bit uh, integers, and so on, up to 64. And then UIN stands for unsigned integer. So, for example, 8-bit integer might go from negative 128 to 127. That's a total of 256 integer values. But the unsigned integers will go from 0 to 255, only positive integer values. Characters and strings. Um, uh, a string is just a list of characters, like A equal to hello world. We put single quotes there. That's hello world. And then you can have Boolean or logical variables, which are either true or false. So that's a basic idea on MATLAB variable types. Um, um, didn't require the textbook for the course. However, uh, you, uh, if you want some place to look, to uh, look up um, questions on MATLAB, you might look at this website, MATLAB Geeks. And like I've always said, um, just go into your favorite search engine, Google, and Google whatever question you have. Almost without exception, I can find the answers to my questions. Now, MATLAB really shines in handling ar arrays, matrices. In fact, MATLAB, the MAT stands for matrix. And so if I set up uh, a matrix here, see I have matrix A equal 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5. Let's do that. Let me go over to MATLAB right here. Let me open up my MATLAB uh, program here, right here. MATLAB's opening up. Come on, MATLAB. There we go. Okay, and uh, look at this window uh, just uh, quickly. Uh, here is where we can type in individual MATLAB commands. Um, this is a list of all the MATLAB programs that I have in a file on my computer. Um, and then you'll see the, what the workspace is used for. So let me first um, define my... Uh, define my matrix A here. I said uppercase A, I'm defining it as it's equal to, uh, and then I'll use square brackets, I'll put 1 comma 1 comma 1, and then a semicolon, 2 comma 3 comma 4, and then a semicolon, 5 comma 5 comma 5, and then close off my square bracket and I hit return, and then here is my matrix. Now, I don't have to use commas. I can just put blanks in there, okay, blank spaces, and it will work. For example, let me do B. I'll do, uh, I'll do my, try to do my matrices as uppercase letters. B uh, equal uh, square uh, bracket, and I'll put one space, two space, three, and then semicolon, and then five space, three space, one, and then semicolon, uh, four space, four space, four, close off the square bracket, and then it'll type B. So I can either use commas or spaces to separate the elements in a row. First row here is one, 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 one. First row here is one, two, three, one, two, three. And the, and the columns are, uh, are separated by semicolons. So that's how we set up a matrix in MATLAB. Now, come back here, we can address individual elements in a matrix array. For example, if I want to know what is A12, that is the element in the first row, second column, I can just type that out here, and I can type um, 
A, and then I put open paren, and then one comma two, close paren, and then that gives me uh, first row, first row, second column, which is a one. Okay, notice now over here in the workspace, I have the the individual variables. In other words, I have matrix A, and this tells me what matrix A is, and then I have matrix B, and this tells me what matrix B is. So the variables, as I work with them over here, uh, become listed in the workspace over here. So I know exactly what value each variable has. Um, now, with that, I, uh, I can, for example, right here, I could just, if I put A colon 2, it will access the, the second column. The second column the, in, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the matrix A. So let's look at that. I put A, oh, uppercase A, colon, Two, like that. So a colon comma two. Forgot the comma. Comma two. Now what happens here when I hit return? It gives me one three five. One three five is the second column. So if I put a colon comma three, it'll give me the third column. Now notice if I put a one comma colon. Let me do it with B. Down here I'll put B uppercase B. Boy, boy, boy. B one comma colon and I hit return. It's giving me one, two, three and one, two, three is just simply the first row in B, one comma colon, first row. Now, you, if you forget how these individual things are done, I mean, you just have to go in and, and, and try some examples, experiment with it a little bit, and you'll figure it out. Um, and then I can do some other things here, and I'll leave this for you to experiment with a bit. For example, A1, comma, 1, 2 will give me the first uh, two columns. I'll just do that one and I'll skip the last one. So A, so if I put A1, comma, 1, colon, 2, like that, hit return. And, uh, oh, see, I forgot to put the parentheses in the front here. So let me try that again. A paren one comma one colon two. There we go. And uh, so this is giving me first row the elements in columns one and two in the first row of A. So these two ones. Okay, now let's go on to the next slide. Um, we want to compute the transpose of a matrix, and we do that just by taking uh, a dot, and then we put a, uh, this, a single quote. So, for example, if I want to get the transpose of matrix A, now remember matrix A is here, so let me type A, there's A, and now I'll put A transpose, like that, and remember with the transpose, all we're doing is taking the first row, making it the first column, second row, making it the second column, third row, making it the third column. So now I could also take all the elements in a matrix and I could make them a, uh, a column vector. So let's do that. A with just colon in it. What does A with a colon in it do? A colon now, here's A, and what I'm going to do is take all these elements and make a column vector, you'll see here. So, 1, 2, 5. 1, 2, 5 is the first column in A, 
one three five is the second column, and then one four five is the third column. So I've taken all of A and turned it into a column vector. Similarly, I can do the transpose of this and turn this into a row vector. So I can do, um, let me do it like this. I could say B equals A there. So I'm making B into this column vector now. So B is now this column vector. And then if I write B period single quote, it will give me what is in B. It will get tell me what it is as a row vector. So um, this is the power of MATLAB is in its ability to manipulate matrices. There's something called cell arrays, uh, which I don't anticipate using at all in this uh, rest, of, rest of our course here. And a cell array is basically an array of arrays where each element of this case, the cell array, which has curly brackets on it, the first element, first row, first column, is itself a matrix. First row, second column is, in fact, a string of characters. Second row, first column, is uh, first element is the number pi. And second row, second column, is, a, is just a, what this is, is just a, a cell three, is a, a three by three array. Uh, but I'm not going to be using this very much, but it's there. Cell arrays are there uh, if you want to do some um, uh, really weird stuff. MATLAB for loops, one of the most important programming uh, things you can do in any programming language. Most, one of the most important programming tools is the ability to set up for loops. So... I'm going to show you how to do for loops and how to do MATLAB scripts here uh, at the same time. Okay, now we've only put all our MATLAB commands down here in the command window. But up here what we can do is we can put in a whole sequence of commands and MATLAB will implement them one at a time. So for example, I already have A, so it knows what A is and it knows what B is. So I could do A plus A plus B, and it will take elements of A and B and add them together. So first row, first column of A gets added, first row, first column of B, and that gets put into the result. Let me call the result C. So I have C equals A plus B, and then I can put in, I want to do C transpose, uppercase C, C transpose there. And uh, so what this program will do is first do this addition computation and then give me C transpose. And it will print out both results. Now let me clear this out. I clear by typing CLC. So there I've cleared it. Now I have two statements and I can have MATLAB execute both statements one after the other here, and um, oh, it's giving me an error. Um, matrix dimensions must agree. Okay, right. I set B to be a column and not a, uh, it's a single column and no longer a three by three matrix. So that, that's my problem here. So let me, uh, let me set up B here, right up top. Let me define B. I'm going to define B B is going to equal, and I put open square brackets, and I put 1, 2, 3, semicolon, 1, 3, 6, semicolon, 9, 6, 3, square brackets. So now I have defined B now to be a square matrix. So I'll print out B. It'll compute A plus B, and then uh, then take the transpose of that. Let's see if that runs. Oh, what am I doing now? Error using Untitled 2 line 1. 
uh, okay, it still has this thing of B. Uh, let me change this. Let me write it as D. There, D. And then I'll write this as A plus D. Now, see what? I'm still getting an error. Dimensions of matrix not consistent. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Maybe A isn't right. Here, let me just redefine everything here, right? Take that out. A, matrix A equals 1, 1, 1, semicolon, 2, 3, 4, semicolon, 5, 5, 5, there. And I close that. Now, It's not liking that. Now it has it here. Oh, I see what I'm doing wrong. Look at that. I don't have a semicolon there. Okay, so if you're not familiar with programming, I tell you that's the dark side of programming is when we, uh, you know, trying to figure out what our syntax errors are. So here's matrix A. Now I'll define matrix B, uh, brand new. Uh, B equals, and I'll put 1, 2, 3, semicolon, 5, 3, 2, semicolon, 3, comma 1, comma 8, close off, and uh, now it should give me A and B. There we go. See, they're both printed out there, A and B. Now, if I put a semicolon after, it doesn't print it out. Watch, I'll run it. Nothing will print out here. It just says untitled 2. Let me clear. CLC. Now I want to do C equals A plus uppercase A plus B and then I'll put D uppercase D equals C transpose. So it won't print out A and B it will print out C which is A plus B and then print out D which will be C transpose. So here we are. Didn't print out A and B. C is 2, 3, 4, 7, 6, 6. So this is the sum of A and B. You can check it out. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. 2, 3, 4 there. D is, is um, then the transpose. So we take first row, put in the first column. Second row, second column, and so on. So there we have. We have um, those two things. I'll print it out. Now, for loops, let me put semicolons here and semicolon here. Remember, semicolon means it doesn't print out. So the program executes these statements, but here it's not going to print anything out. I'll do CL clear and then run and nothing gets printed out. Now, suppose what I want to do is I want to um, uh, use a for loop to compute uh, the square of the numbers from 1 to 10. So here's what I'm going to do right now. In the same program, I'm going to type 4 i equals 1 colon 1 colon 10. So it says I'm going from 1 to 10 in steps of 1. If I didn't put that in steps of 1 there, it would automatically assume I was doing steps of 1. Uh, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then I'm going to say that xi equals i. But I'm not going to print that out. Then I'm going to say that y i 
equals x i squared. I will print that out and I'm going to type end. And you always have to end your for loops. So what should happen there, unless I've made another stupid mistake, is I will eat first value i is equal to 1. So it sets x equal to 1, then sets y equal to 1 squared, which is 1. Then it sets i equal to 2. So x of 2 is equal to 2, and y of 2 is equal to 4. x of 3 is equal to 3, y of 3 is equal to 9, and so on. So if I do this, it should print out 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on, the squares of the x's. Let's see what happens there. So that's what it's doing. 1, then 1, 4. So notice, um, each time through, it's printing out everything that I put in y. So after, when i is equal to 1, I've only put one value in i. But after the second time through the loop, it's, I've now put two values in i, and then three values in i. Now I can put a colon here, and it won't print out anything. So let me type clear. CLC, clear, there. Clear. Now if I run it, it prints nothing. But I can graph this output using a simple plot command. Plot, and then I'll put x comma y. So it does what you guess. It takes the x values, and those go on the x axis of the plot. The y values go on the y axis of the plot. So I run it. Now it prints there. It gives me the plot. So there's an example of how to do uh, a simple for loop and to do a graph uh, in a MATLAB script, sometimes called an M file. It's just a program written in the MATLAB language. So until next time.